So in this video, we're going to learn how to calculate a DIN setting. And what a DIN setting is, the, is re the release setting of the binding. How much torque your leg feels before the binding will actually release. Generally, big people, people get a bigger DIN number than small people do. And so DIN numbers can range anywhere from 0.5 all the way up to 16. It can be huge. But um, generally, the bigger the number, the more difficult it is to come out of your binding, both at the heel and the toe. So um, it's it's very important that these are accurate. Your the customer is in your hands when it comes to their safety. So it's very important that you know how to do this really really well. And so if you ever have any doubts whatsoever, you want to consult with us or again review this video. And then if you have any questions feel free to ask because it is a very important topic. Okay, so here we go. So essentially there are five factors in determining your DIN setting. Number one is weight. Number two is height. Number three is ski or type. Number four is age. And number five is your boot sole length in millimeters. So to calculate a DIN for a uh, non-special case, this is what we do. We take the weight and height, go down to the box where the, the weight is in that box. So let's, let's imagine this person is 100 pounds, so they're between 92 and 107. And let's pretend that they are uh, less than 4 foot 10, so they end up in this box here. And then we come over to H. And H, all these letters here are the skier code. So um, if they were a type 1 skier, we would remain on H. If they were a type 2 skier, we'd move down one row here to I. And if they were a type 3 skier, we'd move down one row to J. Um, now, if they were uh, under 10 or 50 and above in age, we would go up one row. So let's imagine they were a type 1. The same person that's 100 pounds is a type 1 right there on H. And if they were less than 10 years old, that means 9 to, to 1 years old, we'd go up to G, and their skier code would be G. Let's imagine that they were a type 2 skier. We'd go down to I, and then again, they were 9, somewhere between ages of 9 and 1, we'd go up to H. And same for 50 and over, we'd go up to H. So again, let's imagine the same person, 100, 100 pounds, 4 foot 10, We'd start at H, and we we're type 3 skier, we'd go down two rows to J, and then let's imagine they were 50 and over, we'd go up to I. So I would be their final skier code. Then from there, we're going to go over to the column that matches their boot sole length, and these are in millimeters. Not the size of their boot, but just the length of their boot. So let's imagine that, uh, again, uh, we, had, uh, we were on H, was our final skier code, and they had a boot sole length of, let's say, 300 millimeters, which is right there. We're going to come down and over to 3.5, where those two intersect. It's pretty much that simple. Now, let's imagine a person where we had a discrepancy between the weight and the height. For example, let's imagine this person was 100 pounds, but they were 5 foot 3. So the height would put them in that box. The weight would put them in that box. Now, in these two instances where we, the weight and the height don't come out to the same row, we're going to take whatever row is toward the top of the chart. So this one is toward the top of the chart. And then we're going to go over from, from there. So if they were type 1, they'd be an H, type 2, an I, and type 3, a J, assuming they were between 10 and 49 years old. And then again, we just pop over to their boot sole length. It's pretty much that simple. <coughs> so let's imagine a person who is fairly short and overweight. So let's imagine a person that's five foot. They'd be in this gray box here. And they were 150 pounds. That would put them in that weight category there. So again, they don't come out to the same row. We have two different rows. We're going to take the one toward the higher, whatever's toward the top of the chart, that would be this one right here. So that's where we start from. And 
same adjustments for type 1, 2, and 3. To go over skier type, in skier type, it's important for the customer to determine it themselves. That keeps the liability on them and, and takes it off of, of the store and takes it off of the employee. So they need to read these carefully and determine which one they are. A lot of uh, people think that these are associated with beginner, intermediate, and advanced or expert level skiing. And that's really not the case. In fact, many experts can um, ski with type 2 because really they'd rather have their bindings come off. And if you read these definitions here, there's nothing about beginner. The word beginner is not in there. The word intermediate is not in this paragraph. And the word advanced to expert level is not in this paragraph either. So it is important for them to read this and determine for themselves 